Okay, thank you. Uh, Naila, can you hear me? Uh, yes, Mahar, everything is perfect. You can start. So we can start. Okay. Welcome, everybody. We welcome you from CMS. Uh, this is our uh, one of the experimental sites of CERN. Uh, let, let first me uh, give you a kind of introduction. Who are we people? My name is Meher. I'm working here with CMS as an uh, physicist as a researcher, uh, my colleague Bilal. Hi, Bilal. My name is Bilal. Uh, I'm a postdoc here working uh, for the INFN uh, Torino. It's uh, one of the cities in the north of Italy. And uh, I'm based here as a postdoc researcher and I'm a physicist. So Bilal is also a high energy experimentalist. And then we have here uh, Zoltan. And I should move this one. <laughs> No, 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 please don't. Uh, okay. <laughs> Move back okay. to you. <laughs> so we have Zoltan, we have our CMS visit coordinator, Jacob, Hello. and Noemi there. So these are the people who really made it possible this this um, day, I mean, to show you this. this and this is a very uh, unique opportunity. I'm going to give you a bit of introduction. So maybe we can start. I can maybe share uh, uh, my screen. Is possible? Yeah. Oh, okay. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Okay. Uh, because as most of the A-level students, young students, the future of science, they are connected now. So, I'm, uh, so today I'm gonna, we're gonna give you like a very brief kind of uh, introduction to one of the uh, most incredible, let's say scientific attempt. I mean, which is uh, the scientists from all over the world, they are doing here in um, at the border of Swiss and France. So this organization, first to tell you a very, I mean, few details. So organization is called CERN. So this is European Organization for Nuclear Research. So CERN is a French abbreviation. So you know, since already the European. So that's why I mean, you cannot like. So but, so this is the organization, the experiment that it's conducting at the moment. This is this is called Large Hadron Collider. So this is a 27 kilometer tunnel. Uh, I can go to. Like you can see here, you can see your, um, that's Geneva uh, Lake. Here is the uh, Geneva Airport. And now this ring, this is the Large Hadron Collider Tunnel. So this is 100 meter underground, 27 kilometer in circumference. So this is wh where we have the world most powerful particle accelerator. And it looks like this that you can see in the picture over here. So 100 meter down, there are two beam pipes in which uh, we move, uh, we inject protons, one of the particles, of course, you know very well, and then we move them with a very high speed, very close to the speed of light, roughly you can say 186,000 miles a second. So two beams, billions of protons, they move 100 meters underground in these two pipes for uh, with this, this high speed, and then we collide them at four different uh, points and where we have huge gigantic four detectors installed to record all the to take pictures of all those billions of particles in and uh, in 40 million times a second so this is how they like take picture record data and then we analyze them so now one of the these four uh, detectors is the cms detector which is one of the let's say the which is looking for all kinds of physics. And this is uh, one of the major detectors. And this is the one where um, the Higgs boson, maybe you heard there was a Nobel prize awarded in 2012 for the discovery of a very, um, uh, for finding a new particle, which is in common people, they also call is a God's particle. This is a particle responsible of giving mass to other particles in a broader term to you, to us, to stars, to galaxies, to everything. So, and you can see the, the guy who, uh, the scientist who predicted this particle back, I mean, in 40 years ago. So this is uh, here, you can see uh, Peter Higgs and you, together you can see Professor Englert. So once CMS detected this particle here uh, in, uh, after these collisions, so this, uh, a Nobel prize was awarded to these, these scientists. So now this is the CMS. So now what is the plan for today to give you an overall, um, summary of what is CMS, how it looks like, and now 
we are here on site on one of the corner of this 27 kilometer tunnel in the CMS control room. And the most unique part of the tour is our half, uh, half of our team will take you down and you are going to visit this. Uh, so, so they will go through a, an elevator 100 meter down. You will follow the video and they will show you the CMS itself. This is a unique opportunity because when there are collisions, it's not possible to go there. Huge radiations and caverns is completely closed. So we were colliding all these particles for consecutive four years from 2015 to 18. And now we have, we call it a long shutdown. So it's a major uh, maintenance and upgrade um, stop uh, for uh, two and a half years. Now you, you will think like uh, for maintenance and I mean such a, uh, for years, we need that much time. Yes, you will see it's a gigantic machine. Now we are talking about a uh, detector, which is, I mean, if I give you the numbers, it's a 14,000 tons heavy detector, just in terms of mass, forget the technology for the moment. And then, uh, for example, the this uh, Eiffel Tower, for example, uh, so, so our CMS is double in weight than Eiffel Tower. So now you can imagine, and CMS is recording data from 100 million separate positions. So now you can imagine we need very sophisticated detectors and we need uh, fast electronics and then huge computing to store all this data. So this is a I mean, very incredible chance. Now these are the last months of uh, detector opening. For the moment, detector is almost in the final shape because detector is in different layers. So there was a lot of work ongoing. And now soon we are going to close the detector and collisions will start. And then for sev next several years, there will be no chance to visit it. So um, maybe we can continue about the uh, about, uh, details on the way. So now I guess we can, so the tour we will start with the control room and then the and a hall where all these CMS was assembled, show you the shaft where it was lowered down and then uh, Bilal and Noemi will take you down to the cavern and you will see 100 meters underground how the re in real the CMS looks like. And uh, okay. Uh, and also you can see this, the picture on the right. So this is the CMS in closed configuration, but the picture on the left, you can see this is the, when the CMS is open. And for the moment we are, some of the parts of the detector are open because there's a huge work on going. And now you will see it. You will see it in the, in the configuration, the way it is today. Now Bilal and Yumi are preparing. So they're gonna um, give you details of all uh, uh, the control room first and then the underground. Can I stop your sharing? Please? Sure, yes. In the meantime, I think we have just a couple of seconds. Uh, we should probably mention that uh, we expect the questions through the Q and A. Now we have twelve questions there. Okay. I show you them, and then. Okay. So this we can do it then at the end, right? We can do it at any time. So okay. Can we start the video? Yes, please. Uh, you can talk. Which is the screen that is being shared? Ah, okay. Just uh, talk. I'll prefer this one. Okay. Uh, you, can ah, okay. I, you can answer live or type once. So, hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. I can't hear anyone. I'm with you too. Yeah. Ah. Otherwise, speak back. Yeah. No, but uh, I should get a response from the other side, no? No. No, no, I mean from the audience. At least I should know that. Uh, yes, Mahir, we are able to hear you if you're asking us. Yeah, this is Bilal. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. So can I start uh, with the introduction of the control room? So uh, hello and uh, welcome everybody again. So it's on. It's on. Both are, is on. Yeah. 
Yeah, sorry for the interruption. So we are live from the CMS control room. So in front of uh, in front of me, you see quite a lot of screens. So basically, these are the monitoring and control systems for operating uh, the CMS experiment that is 100 meter, uh, meter underground. So the portion that you see in front of me right now, uh, this is dedicated for the for the data taking and during the operational conditions. Usually people sit here and they are responsible for making sure that the data we collect uh, in the times of collisions are, are of good quality and uh, there is no problem uh, uh, while, the, while the data taking. So this uh, place is usually acquired by, by a person who is called the shift leader. So currently you see that uh, the place is unoccupied. And the reason, as Meher explained to you earlier, that right now we are going through a shutdown mode or basically a um, repair or maintenance time period. And we are, uh, we are not uh, taking any data from the, from the collisions. So, well, in fact, there are no protons that are being accelerated in the, in the LHC tunnel. So this is a giant screen that you see here. And I don't know if you can see, but uh, uh, there is uh, this blue line on the top that says shut down, no beam. And uh, there are no plots or no nothing that you see currently, but usually during the, uh, or during the run time or during when the machine is operational, which means that we have protons coming in and colliding with each other. We have several different parameters of the beam that are displayed here. And we could uh, we could we could monitor them and see the status of uh, of the of the machine. Also, there is one big giant screen here, which uh, um, uh, gives us basically the status of the CMS detector. Uh, for example, which part? Uh, so CMS is made up of several different components that uh, we call them sub detectors, uh, and each of these sub detectors we could see. Uh, uh, their status from this giant screen, whether they are switched on, they are off, uh, whether they are configured or not, uh, which means that uh, mm, they are ready for the data taking or not. So these all kind of complex systems and their uh, monitoring and controls are done from, from this part. And uh, that is called the CMS control room. All right, so this is another portion of the control room. Uh, we have quite a lot of screens here. Uh, here, basically, the main job is to uh, make sure uh, uh, the safety of the, uh, of the components of the detectors. Uh, since uh, it's a very complex system, uh, it is quite, uh, mm, I mean, uh, possible that uh, there might be some uh, some kind of problems uh, that could happen related to safety or uh, other stuff. So uh, there is, is usually a, a, a person here operating or looking at the, uh, at the safety systems and all these uh, components that are being installed down there. And uh, mm, for example, in any case of emergency, uh, we could always uh, switch on or off different portions uh, or, for example, notify the authorities related to any prop problems or some something like this. Okay, so this is another uh, portion of the of the control room. Uh, basically, as I explained to you before, that CMS is made up of several different components. Not all the components are same and that I, will, uh, that I will explain you uh, when I will go down. And for each of this component, there is a specific portion or there is a specific desk that we are looking at the systems and uh, we are monitoring them from this, uh, from this area. So right now we are going towards the, we are going towards the place where we had this elevator that will bring us down to the 100 meters uh, deep. 
uh, towards the experiment. So, so there is a biometric entrance procedure that we have to follow every time that we go. Okay, so we are in. The one thing that you'll see here, that uh, there is a sign with the heart uh, and it's crossed. This means that people with any uh, kind of medical implants, for example, the pacemakers, uh, they are not allowed to go underground. And the reason is that uh, the CMS detector has a very strong magnetic field. Uh, it's four Tesla, um, although, Currently, the, uh, the system is uh, not working, but still there could be some, uh, some radiation problems that, uh, sorry, some magnetic field problem that uh, uh, for the implant person, it could not be very fit for them to go down. So they are not allowed to go and uh, see the experiment or work, for example, if you have some conditions like this. So. Uh, as you can see that uh, where this uh, lift is coming from. So there are three parts uh, uh, of the underground area. And uh, we will go approximately 80 meters down up to minus two, which is, uh, so basically the underground area is divided into two parts. One is called uh, the underground service cavern, and one is called the underground experimental cavern. So one is USC. So USC. Okay, we are inside the lift right now. So I, as I was explaining, so there are two it? portions. Not yet. yet, we not oh. not yet dropped down. So oh, we will wow. be disconnected in a moment. So I think Meher, you can you can take over. Yeah, he's already while. prepared. Okay. So now yeah. you are. Now so, you are. Meher. Now I can speak, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Exactly. So now you see the connection is be, um, broken because now Nomi and Bilal are inside the elevator, and this elevator is taking them down. Uh, 100 meter down. So, like Bilal explained, I just you didn't... wrote 97 meters. To exactly, 97 meters Sorry. in total. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. To be precise. But now, uh, 80 meters down, we have two different caverns in which we have a huge number of electronics and helium for the magnet. And Bilal will also show you the CMS inside CMS. We have a solenoid magnet, a huge, which is the world's most powerful solenoid magnet. Okay, you will see it now. You have a chance to see it today. And so this place, for example, you see, so this is one of, we called as a services cavern. So all the high, uh, electric uh, power, uh, power uh, supplies, all the cables which are reading data, which are providing power to the detector, the, 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 for the helium storage, and all these kind of services are installed here in two different floors. And you will see it now. And eventually, the last part that you see now in the in the in the camera. So you see, they are now at minus uh, 97 meters down, and now they are going to enter the um, uh, one of the. Oh no, sorry, not minus. They are now 80 meters down, and now they are going to enter one of the services caverns. Yeah. And as soon back. as they enter, now you will see back, so, they are back. Uh, yes. Maybe we can over yeah, to... Bilal, could you please explain where you are? Uh, we have lots of questions where we are filming from. Ah, uh, yes, yes, yes. Hello. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. So we are at uh, uh, 
uh, US, uh, USC, the service cavern, and this is called the counting room S1. And uh, as you can see that we have a lot of electronics racks here. So as I um, had explained to you before that uh, uh, in, uh, in LHC, we have proton beams coming and colliding at this specific point inside CMS. Uh, and the rate of collision is uh, about 40 megahertz. Now the interesting point here is that not all of these collisions uh, and not all of this data that is coming out of this collision are interesting for us. We are looking for only the interesting physics that we that is something somehow considered us for uh, 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 a, a new kind of signal, a new kind of physics, uh, and we are only motivated uh, to store these kind of events uh, because. Uh, First of all, we don't want to fill our resources with something that we are not interested in. So uh, this means that we need some kind of filter system uh, to filter out the interesting part of events from the one that we don't need. So this, this filtering system is done uh, uh, in these uh, computer racks that you see in front of me. And uh, uh, we name this as uh, the level one trigger mechanism. And what happened is that we reduce the rate from 40 uh, megahertz to 100 kilohertz. Uh, and this is the, um, the rest uh, uh, of the events are not interesting for us. And we could keep only the interesting events. And this whole procedure is done in these electronic racks here that you see in front of me. And you can see that it's mentioned here, trigger and the AQ data acquisition. Now we are moving towards the UXC, as I explained before, X stands for the experimental cavern. And right now we are in the service cavern. just to explain you how the LHC tunnels look like. This is, I think, is the real size image of the LHC, LHC tunnel. And if, uh, unfortunately, we are not going into the LHC tunnel right now, but we are visiting the CMS experiment, but just to give you a feeling that how a tunnel looks like. So this is a tunnel, this is a uh, real size, uh, image of the LHC tunnel and it runs 27 kilometers in circumference uh, across uh, Swiss and France border here. And just to show you a bit of schematic, we have several different uh, uh, rings uh, which have their uh, energies and the speeds are uh, are mentioned, Bila, for example, here. Bila, may I make a, uh, a, a, a remark here? If you can yes, show the, the schematics, we get awful lot of questions about the CERN logo and people saying that this is the 666, the number of the Satan and uh, whatever. Uh, here I would like to first show the CERN logo on the top right. Uh, I don't see any number sixes there, but uh, what I would like to say that this is the artistic representation of the CERN accelerator complex that is uh, on the large schematics. We have 
lots of accelerators. Actually, uh, this is a historical thing. Uh, the PS is in use since 1959. The SPS is since the 80s, and they serve as pre-accelerators of the successive accelerator. So once we accelerate protons to the LHC, they do not get directly to the, to the LHC, but they go through the, the PS, the booster, the PS, the SPS, and then the, the CM, uh, and then the LHC. And uh, uh, Bilal will show you the numbers below. So I just would like to, to say this, and then uh, uh, if possible, I wouldn't like to write down the seventh time yeah, <laughs> the same course, thing. Course, so um, if, you, if you allow me, I will just push these questions to the dismissed in the future. Thank you. All right, thank you very much, Zoltan. So as, uh, as you can see that in each circle, the energy and the speed of the protons is gradually increasing. It's like accelerating a car. When you put a car into the first gear and then you keep moving on forward into the second and third gear, the car keep on accelerating. So that is pretty much the same kind of uh, phenomenon that is happening here because in the end we cannot I mean, we cannot just simply accelerate it all the way to you seven tar electron volts, but gradually these steps are increasing. Uh, Mahat, if you can take over for a minute. Uh, yes, of course. Yes, of course. Hello. So you are, you are in front of the 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 access gate uh, sorry mahar got a got a phone call so i'm going to to continue uh, these doors are needed uh, to separate the physicists from the beam and these doors are are quite uh, uh, safe in the sense that if you would break through during the uh, during the accelerator operation the accelerator would shut down completely, all the 27 kilometer, in order to protect you uh, from the from the uh, radiation. We we use a, a, a an iris scanner in there, so it's the biometric identification of the the personnel who goes through. Uh, if you remember the angels and demons, that was uh, well, I think 15 years ago on yeah. on show. Um, there was a there was a, 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 a spot when people went through on this kind of iris scanner with the with the eye removed of the of the professor. Yeah. The good news is that this is the new type of that. Actually, we are three generations after that uh, reader that we used anyway. Yeah. Uh, but now this one is looking for the blood circulation as well. So. This is nobody this is can... this is regarded as safe. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So nobody can enter. Exactly. Yeah. No. Exactly. So I mean. All right, everyone. So we are in the experimental cavern now, and uh, this is the CMS experiment in front of me. Well, that is the end part or the shielding part of the of the experiment that you see. Just, just keep talking. Okay, so here we are. So just to give you a bit of explanation about the construction of the CMS. So we have five wheels similar to that one. That is one wheel that you see in front of you. So we have five wheels and we call them wheel zero plus minus one and plus minus two. The wheel zero, the central wheel is not mobile, but all the other three, four wheels, we could move uh, forwards and backwards. So right now, and then we have this part that is mentioned as the end cap. So currently you can see that there is a lot of space between these two portions of the detectors. For example, the wheel and the end cap, and we have some equipment that is lying in between in these. Uh, for example, the scissor lifts or the cherry pickers that you see. 
while when the experiment is running this does not look like this everything is tightly or joined together this portion or the this nose that you see this moves forward and everything is packed together as one single unit as uh, we explained before we are going through the long shutdown period this means that we are fixing our detector and uh, um, that's why it is open and uh, we could actually see this view that you are looking at right now which is not possible during the uh, during the running time period also just to give you a bit of explanation about uh, different portions of the of the detector as you see that uh, there are many cables and many different pieces of the detectors that are in front of you. So going from inside out, just to come to the, towards the chart of CMS experiment. So going from inside out, the innermost detectors or the innermost uh, point that is closer to the interaction point or the beam collision point is called the tracker and outside silicon tracker we have the uh, calorimeters and uh, uh, there are two different kind of calorimeters electromagnetic calorimeters and hadron calorimeters these different portions are there to detect different kind of particles and then we have this superconducting solenoid magnet which is the most crucial part of this detector. It produces four Tesla of magnetic field. Um, and it is a niobium titanium uh, coil carrying 18,000 impairs of current. Uh, so four Tesla, it's, 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 uh, it's one of the strongest magnet in the world. And uh, we need this strong magnet to separate different charged particles from each other, the fast moving uh, particles that are coming from the collision or the interaction point and that is the key key point of this this uh, this detector and that is why cms is called cms because c stand for compact although if you look at the numbers uh, the weight of the detector is 14000 tons the overall diameter is 15 meters and overall length is 28.7 meters and the magnetic field is approximately 4 tesla so you can't say that it's a small detector, but yet we still call it as a compact detector because if we compare this with, with the other experiment, uh, for example, Atlas on LHC, it is quite smaller in size and uh, uh, yet it is doing all the jobs that uh, uh, more or less all the jobs what Atlas can do. So we have a compact detector in terms of comparison with other detectors of its league. Uh, the M stand for the um, Mion, which is uh, the particle that we are putting our uh, focus on in this experiment. And the third word stand for the solenoid, which is the solenoid uh, superconducting solenoid magnet of 3.8 Tesla. So let's go towards the different portions of the detector. Meher, you can take over for a while. Okay, yeah, sure, sure. Okay, guys, so uh, I see a lot of questions. So we are going to answer all of your questions. So uh, for at the least we will try. Exactly. <laughs> Zoltan is already uh, replying and uh, I'm noting down all the questions related with the Higgs field and wh what is the idea behind the CMS and what was the purpose of doing all this about the dark matter about the black holes. I'm going to answer all of your questions in one at go. Least, okay? At least in one go. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And I will try to sure, sure, exactly. So, so in this sure. case, I will just uh, uh, keep the the answer blank. Uh, okay. But I will I will delete it from the. Sure. From no, the no, 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 no,
And so this means now there are also, I see questions about the energy. We're gonna tell you the energy. So here we are talking about the tera electron volts of uh, energy. So we collide them at right at the center of this uh, detector. And then uh, now you can see they are showing you different parts. So there are different kinds of detectors, like already explained, many types of different technologies to detect different kinds of particles to understand different physics processes behind, okay? And then how we do it, so beams at a very, very high energy, at which were there at the time of Big Bang. So we create those conditions, collide particles. So it's like we are creating the conditions of the Big Bang. In the center of this machine, particles are produced. And then uh, there are a few questions related with the solenoid. Maybe this we can answer now. You can see the solenoid right in center there. So solenoid is a magnet. You have bended coils. Huge amount of current you flow. Lal explained you how we flow currents. We flow like thousands of amperes of current with zero resistance. This is what is called as a superconductor material. So inside we use superconductors. And in these superconductors, we cool them to minus 271 degree centigrade. So the coils inside this magnet that you see in front of your eyes are cooled at minus 271, colder than the outer space. How we do it? By using tons of liquid helium. So this liquid helium cools them down at this temperature. They become superconducting. Current of this 18,000 amperes goes with zero resistance. This is how we generate this such a high magnetic field. And there was a question why we need magnetic field in order to bend particles, the charged particles, they are bended in this field. And depending on how much they bend, here we can then calculate their mass, their energy, and all the parameters. So that's why uh, this is very crucial for us, this, this um, magnet. So this is a very important part. And then uh, now you can see Noemi and Zoltan, they are almost at the fourth Bilal, floor because- Zoltan is up here. Oh, sorry, <laughs> Noemi and Bilal, sorry. <laughs> so uh, they're showing you from, let's say the fourth floor. So it's, it's, a, it's a big floor. I mean, it's, it's, it's a four, you can imagine it like a five story building inside which we have this 25 meter long, 14,000 meter heavy, this CMS detector, okay? And um, Bilal, do you wanna take over or I, or I continue? Yes, yes. So uh, from here, you can have a very better, uh, very good view of the of the CMS experiment. So as you can, as I explained before, that we have uh, this kind of cylindrical symmetry here, which means that uh, the detector is similar on each side. So we have this wheel. Uh, this is a wheel minus two. We call this, and the next wheel is which is identical to this one. And this is how the experiment look like when the experiment is running. So this is one wheel, and this is the other wheel that is joined together and there is no space in between. And that is, uh, this is the, the, uh, the, the wheels are closed here. But during uh, the technical stop, so for example, uh, a long shutdown like this, when we have to go and repair something, we have to open the wheels up like this, as you can see. So now we have a big gap between the wheel minus two and the end cap. And uh, this will be pushed together in this year. And from next year onwards, we will be taking again the data uh, from the collisions of the, of the proton. But uh, one thing to note that uh, uh, it's, uh, not allowed, for example, when the experiment is running to reach to this point uh, or any other point in the experimental cavern. Uh, and uh, this is quite a unique opportunity uh, for you to visit uh, live from the experimental cavern. Uh, the experiment opened in such a way. So I would consider myself lucky if I... <laughs> Yes, you can imagine this is the like the uh, the overall this project is the world most complicated scientific attempt in the history of mankind. Okay, and now 
this is a rare opportunity, like Bilal said, because the detector is going to be closed and there is going to be collisions. Nobody can access the uh, cavern for next years, you know? So, and so, uh, I mean, this is like, let's say, uh, uh, you can call it a discovery machine or, 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 or a big bang machine because the energy that we create here at, by colliding these particles is, is refers to what, I mean, the conditions which were there at the time of the Big Bang. We will talk about it in detail. For the moment, I'm noting your question. So uh, maybe we, I can answer a couple of more questions which are related to the cavern now, and then we will go to the broader concepts, the Higgs mechanism and all this um, purpose. So there were some questions about uh, radiation and how we protect ourselves and how, uh, how are the radiation. So like Bilal said, for the moment we are off, magnet is off, there are no collisions. But still, when we go there, so you maybe you notice, so Bilal and Noemi, they are wearing these dosimeters. So there are like we have these uh, devices which are um, recording all our um, dose. And if it goes to a certain level, this system that uh, the security system where they uh, check in, this will not allow you to go enter if you your body is already exposed to this dose. And then uh, during the collisions, of course, when there are radiations, no way to go in. So that there are very special procedures if there is urgent intervention by the several experts required to stop the beam, to stop the, uh, uh, I mean, uh, to have uh, to wait for the like the radiation level to go down and then the double check for the from the radiation teams to see if it's safe for the personnel to go and then for a very short time experts go and do their intervention if this is highly necessary. Uh, but other than that. It stays closed, nobody enters, and it's completely like um, uh, closed. And now uh, Bilal and Noemi, they are walking through the floor. So it's, it's like the, and you can see there these yellow things. So there are people already accessing heights. You can see there are people working more than 15 meter high on, on different detectors. And also you can see there are like, uh, thousands and thousands of kilometers of uh, cables you can see because you have to provide power to every detector. You have to power up the electronics on every detector. You have to read data through dedicated uh, fibers from every detector. And here we are talking about huge, like uh, thousands of detectors, okay? So uh, that's why now in every station you see different detectors, different their services, and uh, the center is the solenoid. If you can see on the right side, which is this round uh, silver thing. So this is the edge of the solenoid. It, it's, it's five meter long. So inside you, we have four superconducting, which I explained to you what is superconductors coils, uh, uh, which are cooled at minus 271 degrees and which generate this huge amount of field. Bilal, do you wanna say something or I continue? Yes. Uh... So uh, just want to say that uh, the discovery of the Higgs boson, uh, which uh, Maher already said briefly about that it was one of the important particles, or let's say the missing particles from the standard model of particle physics, which was one of the theories that has uh, been so far so well predicted, so well understood, uh, but one of the missing puzzles or one of the missing pieces uh, was the Higgs boson. and. Uh, uh, the main goal or the main intention was to discover the Higgs boson and to understand that uh, its nature uh, was one of the biggest goals of the CMS experiment. And uh, in 2012, uh, the discovery of the, of the Higgs boson was announced uh, both from the CMS and the Atlas experiment simultaneously. And it was one of the biggest achievements in the particle physics history. And uh, the credit goes to uh, the collaboration of the CMS and Atlas and all the people who were involved in this, uh, uh, this massive experiment. Um, and after the discovery, uh, also, for example, looking at the properties of the detectors, how the charge or the mass or the different other physical properties look like, uh, these calculations or these measurements are also uh, done using the data collected from these experiments. So, uh, so far, uh, the, so far, uh, I would say that the, uh, the CMS uh, detector has been successful 
in uh, doing its job. And now the intention is that uh, we are going for the future high luminosity collision, which means that uh, the rate of collisions in the in the in the proton beams it would be increased the the five I to seven do. times. Okay. And uh, uh, this means that we will we will be able to collect more data in in less amount of time. And uh, for this, we need to uh, prepare our detector for this uh, high intensity or the more uh, radiation dense environment. And uh, what these technical stops or these long shutdowns or, the, or there will be another one of, uh, in the future, uh, we will make sure that our detector is ready for the future, for, the, for this futuristic high energy or high luminosity collisions. And uh, 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 these kind of stops and uh, uh, in the long shutdown periods, our engineers and the physicists will make sure uh, that by 2025, uh, 2025, which would be the uh, time of high, high luminosity collisions, we are ready. And the experiment is uh, uh, well integrated for the data taking at that time. Um, I have, if you want to say something. Now you are on. No, no, okay. Okay, Thank, thanks Bilal. So uh, like you can see here now, div, no, so now they're going through the different stations. So like it's already explained, so there are different detectors installed after very careful calculations at different part of the, of the detector. So everything is very carefully studied and installed in a way. And this, this is now a process of decades. So there were some questions related to when, uh, what was the idea and when this idea was originated and why we are doing this, okay? So CERN is doing all these experiments since uh, like it's more than 45 years ago, okay? And the CMS, there was a lot of R&D and research was uh, ongoing on papers and computers since long. But the construction was started in, let's say, 99, 1999, and then, uh, let's say, in one decade, finally, CMS was there on the ground. And now it's a collaboration of uh, more than 60 countries, the CMS itself. Overall, CERN is a collaboration of more than 100 nations. So now all the detectors that you see, all different types of detectors, they belong to different collaborations. So each collaboration have the scientists from let's say all over the world and each technology is a joint venture of all those institutes from those countries okay and then all these scientists from all over the world so they worked on different parts of that uh, technology and finally these detectors were built in different parts of the world then they were brought to uh, here in, in 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 cms is in french area so here in france in Sassy on the surface. And then all these were gathered in these 13, they were installed in these 13 different stations on the surface. And with a huge shaft, uh, which Bilal was pointing the camera before, they were lowered down one by one, these thousands of tons heavy pieces with a very special mechanism. They were lowered down very carefully. And then all these were uh, joined together down 100 meter down in here. So this is how I mean, you can get now an idea of like, uh, uh, since when. Now, the idea is basically CMS is a detector, right? There are different technologies where we detect different particles. So maybe now I guess I can, I can tell you a kind of a short story. So in which we will go through all your questions with the ideas and why, how and why. So we can discuss these two questions. So I guess here we can cover up all your questions. So now let's let let's first go back to the very beginning. Or maybe I can show you a nice picture here. Uh, yes. So yes. Okay. Let 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 me tell you a story a few minutes, and then I guess here we can cover up all your questions. So 
you can see this picture. So this is the evolution of the universe. So now we are living in a universe. This universe is constant. Maybe you already know already everybody. Our universe that we are living in and today we can see billions of galaxies with the powerful telescopes. We have observed more than 700 smaller and more than 320 billion galaxies. So this is, let's say, our visible universe. And all these galaxies are getting away from each other, like you can see in this picture. So the universe is expanding. All the galaxies are going away from each other. Okay, And the life of our universe since it, the Big Bang happened is 13.8 uh, billion years, light years. Okay, So it means if you go back in time, so the universe was compact, smaller, and hotter. So now our universe is expanding and getting cooled. So if you go back, so we are, I mean, now we are in a, an old and cold universe. Before, hot, 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 compact. And if you keep on going 13.8 billion years back, you reach this point that you can see with the mouse. So this was the point when the entire universe was less than the size of an atom here. And then there was a huge explosion, which is called as Big Bang. So here the Big Bang occurred. Since then, there was a process, the universe, the, so the, there was a time when these atoms were formed and the galaxies were formed. And since then, all these galaxies, and then the human life after several billion year, uh, years from the Big Bang, and all this now the universe since then is expanding and getting cold. Okay, now, so the idea is we have a lot of questions in our mind, how to, okay, what are we made of? Um, what happened right after the Big Bang? Are there um, uh, the matter that we see, what we call matter that we are made of, protons and these electrons, but this, so is there only matter in the universe? No, we know there is, something else which we called as antimatter. So we know our universe has, should have almost equal amount of matter and antimatter. But where is antimatter? We don't see it. This is a question. Then is there a dark matter? Yes, there is a, uh, we know that there is five times more something called dark matter than the matter, but how it looks like, we don't know. So there were questions about this dark matter. We will come to this now. And then, so, oh, Dark matter, we don't know. Antimatter, we don't know. Extra dimensions, yes, they exist, but we don't know them. So all this, these are the questions in this, uh, that in this universe um, line, in this story. So now, how can we try to answer these <laughs> questions? So the one way is, in my opinion, when I was thinking, uh, about all these kinds of problems. So I was thinking maybe some scientists will make a time machine and we will go back in time and we'll see everything and we will understand everything, okay? But then we studied physics and we found out that, no, uh, we cannot make a time machine which can take us back in time. But yes, we can take a time machine which, will, which can take us in future. And the LHC experiment that you are having a virtual visit today of the one of the experiments, but this is basically a time machine. So the idea is when the particles move very fast, their times become slow. So this was a genius idea given by the Einstein. So the protons that are moving in our accelerator, their time is different from our time because they are moving with a very high speed. And this, uh, this same thing is happening on the satellites on the, and this is uh, how, how you are using this GPS. All these corrections are applied there. So the idea is, that we cannot make a time machine which can take us back. What is the other possible way of uh, trying to find an answer to all these questions? So the idea, the answer is here at CERN, at LIC, in our experiment, that let's create those conditions which were here, where I'm pointing this mouse, at the time of the Big Bang, and let's study matter at those energies which were there at the beginning. And let's try to see how things happens. And here comes this questions, uh, a lot of questions were related to this point. 
the Higgs um, uh, field and mechanism. So what happened is basically all our universe is filled with the Higgs field. So the, all the particles, when they interact with Higgs field, they gain mass. So the stronger the particle interacts with the Higgs field, the larger the mass it gets. But now the question is, uh, this happened here at those energies. Now we are living in an old and cold universe. So how can we create Higgs particle in the in the in the lab? So the idea was this: let's collide particles at a very very high speed so that they attain those energies which were there right at the time of Big Bang, and we study different particles physics processes at those energies. And when these conditions were achieved, then we were able to find the Higgs boson for the first time in experimental lab, and we confirmed it. And then the two scientists, which I showed you the picture before, who predicted this, uh, um, uh, who gave this theory of Higgs mechanism of all this mass. So then this was experimentally proven and the Nobel Prize was awarded to them. So the so Higgs basically particle is responsible of giving substance, giving what we called as mass to the other particle. So in broader term to the whole universe. So this was the one point. And now, but as I told you, there are a lot of unanswered questions. So here in this experiment, we have the scope to try to find all those answers. Are there extra dimensions? We are looking for them. Are there dark matter? We are looking for the dark matter candidates. And at these energies, at these conditions, there is a chance we can uh, open doors to this new knowledge frontiers. And similarly, all the other questions like this. Now, the other, there were some questions related with the, how the technology gets benefit by going into the matter. So basically technology gets boost when you understand the basic building blocks, like when you go deeper into the matter. When I was a kid, very young, I, we studied that atom is the basic building block of matter. But then in the later books, we found out, no, atom is a whole, is a big world. There is a, a lot of number of particles inside. There's a huge world inside atom in, in a very small uh, part of the atom, which is called nucleus. Inside nucleus, we have protons, we have neutrons. Inside protons, we found out we have quarks and you know, and so on. So it means as you dig deeper into the matter as you understand the like the basic building block of the matter your technology advances for example when atom to nucleus was discovered you can imagine like um, nuclear reactors were formed and all these i mean huge bump in the, in, in this uh, technology so the deeper you go to the uh, matter the broader your technology becomes and today you have iphones you have these small chips in your hand and you're using them. So this is all due to the understanding of the matter at the deeper level. So, so there were some questions related to this item. And now coming back to the CERN LAC. So of course, what, uh, what we have at CERN, world most powerful accelerator, state of the art cutting edge detectors. Then we have the world most powerful magnets. Then we have the very fast electronics which take this data because Bilal explained you, we are here colliding 100 billion particles, 40 million times a second. So we have an enormous rate. And that's why they showed you the trigger, how we filter data and uh, get only the interesting part and analyze them. And this is how we are trying to find the new physics, like we've searched the Higgs boson and you know a lot of other interesting searches. So all, uh, so yeah, so now I'm going, up towards the bit of technology, how, I mean, uh, the, the other part. So, for example, how, how can we use them in, 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 and then computing, I forgot to mention, of course, we have a worldwide computing uh, setup. It's, it's because we are dealing with an enormous amount of data, okay? Now, Higgs boson, like we said, which is one of the, like the major discoveries of this century, deeper, which opened a lot of like a gate to the, new understanding of the physics. Then we have a lot of work here is done on the on the materials which are used in like industries in, in, in different, you know, um, our, our uh, industries mainly. And plus 
we have a lot of medical applications. For example, the CT scans and MRI scans. So these are the, the detectors like we have. We are identifying the particles at a very deeper level. So this is a very simple application of all these MIT and PET scans, you know. Similarly, this uh, imaging and scanning, all that stuff. Plus, uh, yeah, I, I forgot to mention. So the one of the, I mean, the, the, the world wide web. So this was invented at CERN. So the idea is there are uh, scientists from all around the world which are uh, collaborating and which are, um, uh, they, they needed an interface to communicate, to share things. So this was the idea. And so one of the physicists from uh, a British physicist, so he invented this World Wide Web in, in, in 90s. And, and uh, then Sun has a protocol. All this science is open to the humanity. And um, so this pro HTTPS protocol, this was given free to the world. So this was the like uh, revolution to the digital universe. So this is achievement to the Sun. And if you ever visit Geneva, there is a globe, we have a, we call it a globe of science and innovation, and you can see the first World Wide Web server. This is displayed there. So it, it will be an incredible chance, I mean, to visit it. So similarly, as we told you about the superconductors and all these things, so these are like, this is the future. This is the technology, you know, which will uh, have a revolution like in, 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 in industry. So similarly, but, all these are like side, and there are medical applications for the uh, uh, treatment of the cancerous and the other cells, you know, to using the same beam that we are using because we have a very thorough knowledge and expertise on these beams. So these are used to destroy those tumors. And this beam has, because we understand it well, and we know this is not like laser going and, you know, destroying all the all the cells on the way. It, it, it just keeps its energy, it holds its energy. It's like nothing is passing through your body. And when you focus it on the tumor, it breaks it. So these kinds of applications, of course, you can do it when you have a deep understanding of such uh, uh, processes behind and you have the instrumentation to do it. So all these kinds of things are ongoing. So, but the idea is, this is the side part. The main thing is the understanding the, the, because this is a curiosity driven science. So we are like, uh, like, like I said, there are a lot of unanswered questions. So the idea is to try to find those answers. And this is what all the, leading scientists from all over the world uh, relating to, I mean, these fields and engineers, they are here. It's a very joint, beautiful uh, venture of science. You can imagine like all around the, I mean, the people, regardless of their culture, regardless of their ethnicity, they are here just for science. Science for humanity, like regardless of any other differences, you know? So this is a beautiful place and I hope, I mean, Many of you young guys uh, in future, they will, they will uh, come and join this experiment and they, maybe you will be able to answer some of the unanswered questions. So this is a journey, you know, we are with the time we are like uh, getting more and more information of the universe, but this universe is too huge that we still, I mean, the more the information we get, we get to know that, oh my God, the, what we know is too small compared to the total volume, you know? So there are a lot of mysteries, a lot of, unanswered questions. So I hope we were, we were able to give you a kind of a glimpse of the overall uh, kind of an overview of this project. And so this was the idea, I mean, to share with the, especially with the young students to give you, I mean, uh, an idea that there are, there, there are thoughts like this, there are attempts like this ongoing. And this is the future, I guess. And this is like uh, you guys, I mean, uh, will have to take a lead. I mean, and so th this is, I guess, one of the best way. So, so it's, it's, it's player, it's an honor for us. I mean, being part of this project and being part of this, uh, what an, such an incredible attempt. So thank you very much. And it was player, I mean, arranging this visit for you. We can keep in touch for any questions and uh, I mean, in future. So uh, Naila, maybe if you, if you wanna say something or if uh, I guess the time is over, and I would like to very especially thanks to all our uh, uh, teams yeah. here uh, because all these are very busy people and they took out their time. Uh, so it was for you. So it's, 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 it was. Uh, uh, thank you so much, Meher. If you can just uh, give me a moment. So sure. I just want to wind up uh, to proceed for the closing of this event. Thank you so much. It was incredible. And uh, I must say that you make it more interesting for our students than what they are learning in school. 
And for your research, it's quite challenging. We can't really predict, but uh, wish you good luck for your proceeding steps. And uh, on my behalf, on my management behalf, I would like to thank all CERN management for being so detailed and cooperative throughout during the arrangement phase of this event. And I'm thankful to Al Hussan management uh, for understanding and showing their interest after when I proposed for this event. And uh, definitely last but not least, I'm thanking my participants, my OS staff members, and my dear students for taking out time and attending this virtual visit. Hope it will influence positively for your academics. Thank you so much once again, everyone. Stay safe and take care. Thank you. Thank you, Raila. Thanks. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.